It's May 7th, 2017. This is the Fancy Ramen Podcast. I'm Neil. I'm Cookie. Today we're going to be short-staffed just a little bit. What um, are you talking about? Scott's going to be here a later today. Wink, he's just, wink. He's just in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came over and was just like, guys, guys, I'm having some stomach issues. Start without me. I'll be yep. back. <laughs> So uh, for this portion, we're not going to get into anything too specific. We're also not going to be talking about another until Scott's around. Speaking of another, another topic yeah, to discuss. Exactly. <laughs> Have you been up to anything exciting this week? I'm trying to think. Like My week's been... I found out that there was a season two of a show called Animals on HBO. It's an animated thing it like follows it's an animated show that follows certain animals throughout just like specific days and there's like an underlying backstory of so like season one was starts off you're looking at two rats mike and phil and they're watching the mayor screw this prostitute and the mayor is like an actual human being but the two rats are like talking to each other and they're like like that's weird huh she does not look like she's enjoying that at all. And then like the mayor ends up killing the prostitute by accident. So then it goes on to the story of Mike and Phil as their rats and kind of just follows different animals throughout the entire series. They're like all small rodents, basically. They're so rats. They do dogs at one point. There's squirrels. Is it just a long running gag about like or social commentary? kind of social commentary so it's like these animals are just going through everyday life doing random things through the pitfalls of you know you're an animal this is what your day is like sure so if you're a sewer rat this is what you're kind of doing but they're like having conversations with each other and talking about things while the underlying story of mayor killed the prostitute in the first episode so the second episode there was like a big investigation and then to the mayor um basically getting off without getting caught about with killing the prostitute and then it was like the last episode for season one is always the last episode for the seasons are always in two parts season one's last episode part one was about turkeys so it ends in thanksgiving time and so season one starts off with like the mayor's choosing the turkey to kill for their like big turkey dinner and there's a big show so it's following a turkey who just happens to be in love and his wife gets chosen. So part one is his wife getting chosen and him dealing with the distraughtness of my wife's been murdered for this fat ass mayor guy. And so like he gets buff and he and part two is him like getting his revenge and he ends up killing the mayor. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't really expect it to go there. And then season two, I just realized was out and I was like, oh, sweet. I can binge all of this. <laughs> so it just followed even more animals. And there was like this corporation who made this virus and they like spread it across New York City and then created a cure. But it was like the human story was devastation because this virus is out of control and these, this corporation has a cure. And we need to figure that out. But the uh, animal portion is just like weird everyday life. Almost even sitcom-y at times for the animal specifically. Kind of not really. It's so one of my favorite episodes from season two was called 13 Roaches. So it was about roaches who lived in like this lady's apartment in the wall. And it starts off with the lady leaves the house because she calls an exterminator. The exterminator drills a hole in the wall and starts like killing all the roaches. So there's this large roach apocalypse and this gay roach, he lost his daughter and his husband. So it's kind of him trying to find himself in this new like apocalyptic world. There's a tough roughing grumble ro roach that's like leading the pack. There's a priest roach who's anti homophobic and there's this um pregnant roach wait the priest roach is homophobic or against yes. ho okay yeah so he 
because he's a priest. He's Catholic. Yeah, I figured as much. So, and basically it's like, so they're going and they're trying to escape. And like right before the very end, the female roach has her baby and dies. And it's just the one male roach who lost his family and this baby and the exterminator finds him. So he like, so he takes the baby like a basketball and shoots him down the drain of a uh, sink. And you see the roach, the baby roach, like floating in the sewer system. And there are these, all the, all these other roaches there and they look kind of a middle Eastern because they're dressed like real middle Eastern. And they're like, Oh my God, what is that? Oh, it's a baby. Oh, it's a miracle. We should call him G- Mike. Mike is a great name. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll call him Mike. <laughs> You're just like, come on. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting show. It's called Animals. It's on HBO. Besides that, I've been going to become a broker. You're going to be a broker? I'm going to become a stockbroker, so I've been studying to become... Ah studying to get my series seven with your current company i take it yeah and persona 5 has been tearing my family apart <laughs> have you been playing it more um 48 hours in now wow i i, I did not mean to <laughs> guilt you into playing more persona 5 no so. i'm still planning on i want to beat it but it's like as soon as i sit down to play it you can't just play it for like yeah no five minutes you, you gotta you definitely can't if there's one thing I can say about Persona 5, it's that it doesn't necessarily create good stopping points for you within reasonable amounts of time. It does not. Because <laughs> when you're motivated to do something, to pursue a, an objective, it, like it sounds simple enough where it's like, oh, I guess I have that goal now. But that goal turns into like a 10 hour long struggle, depending you know, on certain elements. And after you get done, well, it, it's because achieving that goal doesn't necessarily give you the emotional payoff until I'm trying to be as like have as possible. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give you the payoff until enough in game time has passed like obligatory. And you can't just skip all that time doing nothing. Like you still have to maximize your, your schedule. So like what you think will only take a couple hours turns into like 10 hours sometimes. It's just like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Lachlan, uh, I don't know if you remember what he was, uh, Lachlan was telling us at a uh, social gathering, but he's been doing the remote play through his PC. Shit, I forgot that's available through the PC. Yeah, and that, that seems like a pretty good way to, to, to do it, I guess. I'm, I'm wondering if you can do that from like a laptop off of the local network and just going over, or over your wide network at that point, wide WAN, internet, whatever. Yeah. No, you can. I didn't ever even thought about that because I've been like thinking, man, I really want a PS Vita now so I can actually just play it on break, yeah. play it at work. <laughs> no. Kind of. That's what I do for my... Well, that's what I'm playing with my Switch. It, it is funny that you bring up the career change too. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you can call it a career change going from like one side of the company to another or at least pursuing those options because I think I'm going to try... Well, I'm attempting to go back to school this summer i'm not sure if i'm too late for registration at this point but i'm going back for it initially and then i may end up uh, transitioning from information technology to computer science kind of excited about that i could dig it that's something i i don't really want to pursue (laughs) for for me i also kind of want to take some video classes too uh partly because one of the local colleges more or less gives you unlimited access to their uh their closet you could say or their locker of gear at that point and like hey then we'd be able to have video on this podcast well that that's one motivation but also just the exposure to more video production because i really really am are interested in like production as a whole but the reality of it for me is that i don't want to go through i don't want to get another major in video production just so i can run cables for a company in town like i want to do it for more independent pursuits interests for that matter that makes sense uh but yeah trying to figure out how to get back into college after roughly 10 years of not college yeah it's kind of weird like do transcripts like, do I still need to get transcripts for my high school and old colleges in paper form? Or does everyone just go email and digital at this point? 
Like what actually works? I don't know. Right, exactly. Hmm. And people are really shitty at answering emails too. So I, like, I, <laughs> I think I just have to like drop by this college and just be like, hey, I want to talk to somebody now. It's like, um, sir, we're in the busiest time of our registration. I don't care. I'll wait. I'll wait here. <laughs> Can I bring coffee in here? Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> but, yeah, as a whole, it, it seems like uh, I, I got my I don't know if I've talked about this, but I got my Jeep back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so this week has kind of been a lot of like getting air fixed up, doing everything you need to do when your car gets stolen and recovered. And it's actually not with us today because it's got a little bit of a leak in the radiator. So that's kind of a pain in the ass right now to deal with. But hopefully it's nothing major. Are we blaming the uh, the people who stole the car? No, I think it was pre-existing. I could be wrong. I'm not really Let's sure just blame at this them. point. Oh, you don't have theft insurance. Never mind. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so it doesn't it, matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It just makes me feel better if I can shift the blame, I, I guess. But, uh, but like in terms of games and such, or in terms of other things I've been doing this week, I did try to pick up two different animes for the hope of like trying to get into something a little lighter this season. The first one I picked up, I don't remember the Japanese name, but it's called Love Tyrant. See, that's on my queue. And I don't know. I got a couple episodes in and it's not really striking. It's not really striking a chord with me quite yet. Uh, But the premise basically is that a Cupid ends up making uh, this this character, the main character. uh, uh, Actually, actually, let me let me reference something better. You're familiar with Death Note, right? Yeah. Well, in this anime, there is a book called The Kiss Note. And if you don't kiss this person, or if you don't kiss someone once you've been put into The Kiss Note, within 24 hours, you will die. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And the main character, uh, the, this Cupid girl decided to uh, put the main character's name in, but it, it was kind of a mistake because she thought she was putting in like a famous actor's name, but she screwed up the kanji. So it turned out to be the protagonist as we know it. And at that point she's like, well, I guess I, uh, you know, I guess I'll just figure out who he wants to end up kissing and like falling in love with using the kiss note. Um, Oh wait, no, it's not, it's not the main character that would die. It's the Cupid that would die. If the, that oh. person doesn't kiss someone, I don't know what the explanation is as to why she doesn't, fill in the rest of the second half of the entry because she kind of comes in over and is basically like okay who should the person I attach you to be and they end up going to his school and there's like an obvious girl he has a crush on and that's who they end up writing in the notebook but before they even do that they realize that she's Yandere and like completely obsessed with the main character and there's miscommunications and misunderstandings between the main character, the Cupid, and the girl. So the girl starts trying to kill the main character and the Cupid girl. <laughs> and then somehow by the end of the first episode, all three of them are in the notebook together. The Cupid angel, the Yandere murderous girl, and the main character. And from there on... It so what you're, what you're saying here is I should probably just start watching the first episode now. Maybe. You might, <laughs> you might like it a lot. I'm it's, looking for like joy and fun, but maybe not that mindless quite yet. Ah, nope. I like mindless joy and fun. <laughs> well, okay. So here's, here's another bizarre one for you. I don't remember the name of this one. I should probably just look it up right now. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to cut this part out. Cutting this part out. I'm singing the song about cutting this part out. Yeah, the magic of editing. Ooh, yeah. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I might not even have to uh, do any cutting. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this since I've never tried to pronounce it before. Uh, but. Senai heroin no sodate kata. And for those of us who are American, English, please. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Where's it on? Oh, actually, it's something like uh, how to make my boring girlfriend or how to raise a boring girlfriend is the name of it. It's on its second season and 
uh, that's currently airing right now. The first season was uh, shown back in 2015. Watched a couple the, episodes of the first season, and the premise, more or less, is that the main character, who is a complete otaku, ends up having a very cliche uh, encounter with a girl. The Sundari girl with the um, pigtails, right? Uh, actually, not her, but she is a major character. She's it's, Sundari? It's this very, yes, yes, of course. Because she's got pigtails. Obviously, <laughs> and blonde for that boot, too. She's <laughs> going to have a Western personality that makes her more Sundari. Uh, the main character... Westerners are Sundari. Usually, yes. That's so weird. Yes. Like, even in real life. Yeah, exactly. God damn it. I hate white people because of that. I'm just like, <laughs> so you like her, she likes you. Why are you guys just not going out? And it's really obvious when two people like each other because they're really aggressive in like a playful manner, which is more or less Sundari as a whole. Pretty much. I'm just yep. like, God, this is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is also maybe why I don't like the Sundari characters half the time. <laughs> like Origairu. Uh, have, you, have you seen Origairu? I have not seen Origairu. Uh, it's like think. the My Teenage Life is a Romantic Comedy oh, yes. or Snaffy, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like where the canon girl, at least seemingly, uh, at least what seems to be the canon girl is like Sundari is fuck Toradora, another case where the Sundari girl always gets the win. Like all this, all this is teaching young impressionable kids, be it in Japan or America, are that you just have to be kind of mean, and you're going to end up with the boy. Well, if you want something a little different, you should watch Love Rice. Love Rice. Love Rice. You know, I think I have heard of that. In fact, it's currently airing, right? It's currently airing. They're on episode five right now, and I have not watched it, but it's in my uh, Crunchyroll queue because. It's got the word rice in it, and I think it's about food. Yeah, I'll check it out. It's about five boys, I think. Let me let me count. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five boys. Five boys and rice. Is it boy love? I think it might be boy love. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. I didn't watch Yuri on Ice. Maybe I need to give it a chance. Oh, my God. It Not was Yuri so on Ice good. specifically, but this too. But <laughs> Oh, my God. Yuri on Ice was so I have, good. I have no problem so gay. with homosexuality. So gay. So good. So gay. <laughs> Just saying that in particular, I'm not a fan of ice skating, so I kind of feel like Yuri on Ice would not resonate well with me. Wait, why aren't you a fan of ice skating? Because why do you have to attribute something? It's like competitive painting to me. It sounds stupid as fuck. I'd be interested in competitive painting. Uh, I. It's kind of like competitive sweeping. Audio can't translate like the the anguish I'm having right now. <laughs> it's just competitive sweeping, but without the sweep, without the sweeping is Yuri on ice. Cause you know, uh, that one game. Oh God. I forgot what it's called now. Competitive sweeping. It's the Olympic sport. It's a winter Olympic sport. Oh, curling, curling, competitive sweeping, but they're not on ice skates. I know, but they're on ice and competitively sweeping. Well, okay. So here, here's my issue with competitive painting, competitive ice, or competitive figure skating, competitive anything in terms of artistic value. There is not a tangible way to measure someone's success. I understand there is an element to that with ice skating because of the technicality of your... That's what it's all actually all about. That's how they measure everything. I thought they measured it based upon like the artistic theme of the performance too, though. So they'll do if the... Um, so they, your attitude... If it doesn't fit the theme of your like thing that you're going, okay, obviously that's not going to work for you. So like if you're being really aggressive, but your performance is supposed to be really gentle, yeah, the music plays a big part in it. Like yeah. your music selection, that already makes me feel really <laughs> uneasy about it. If it was more like, and and I realize too that this is going to sound weird, but I'm fine with professional skating. And at the same time, not fine with professional skating. Oh, yeah. I guess I need to be specific. <laughs> professional skateboarding and ro uh, rollerblading because I guess it's I'm not super fine. I'm better with that because it's all about the technicality of the tricks. Whereas with like figure skating, it seems like there's a greater importance placed upon the artistic integrity and value of it. But by... I'm making it a sport all about numbers and scores. 
it diminishes that value to me. So I think it just comes from you not understanding enough. So you should watch Yuri on Ice. <laughs> it'll really make you, it'll really give you that understanding. Yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I didn't know anything about figure skating, really. All I knew about it was I didn't really like skating, as in on ice skating, because yeah. screw that noise. Yeah, you can fly someone's blade. neck in Pretty the middle much. of it. Like, it's fucking dangerous shit. I've seen hockey before. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just like, Yuri on Ice, man. It teaches you so much about like every little thing that goes on. It's like, I saw this uh, thing on Tumblr where it was just like, back in the day, whenever I saw, uh, whenever I saw a figure skater fall, it'd just be like, oh, that's unfortunate. After Yuri and Ice, it's just bawling. It's just like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe they fell. Oh no. It's that, the worst that thing. That could have been their dream ending right there. Quite literally. Yeah. And. I don't want to get depressed over people falling, though. You're on ice. <laughs> All right, yeah, maybe. Uh, real quickly, to go back to how to raise a boring girlfriend, the main character has this experience with this girl, super cliche, sort of like, oh, you just dropped something and I picked it up for you. And that motivates him to start making a dating simulator. Instead of, you know, asking the girl out like any reasonable person. Uh, so he picks out the, the Sundari blonde girl who is by day like a popular art student and by night an arrow, arrow, a pornographic artist. Okay, okay. I, I don't know the better way to put it, but like a pornographic artist. <laughs> <laughs> and... uh this other girl in the class who's like extremely popular and stuff or like older girl uh, in the class up who happens to be a light novel writer. And so he recruits the two of them to make like to start this circle is what they call it to make this game based upon this girl who he ends up running into again and kind of to his, uh, to his dismay realizes that she's super boring even though like he's trying to <laughs> she's his muse but when you find out that your muse has like no character at all that's kind of how the show starts off seems okay but yeah maybe your on ice is exactly what i need right now <laughs> damn woodpeckers is that a dog or? yeah i think it's a dasher scratching uh, okay that makes sense uh, but yeah, as a whole, haven't really been playing a lot of games, except for the fact that we just picked up Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch today and played a little bit with you before we started this podcast. We played with two Switches and... Two Switches, four people. Yeah, played really well, played fine. We didn't even have to do Wi-Fi initially, and it seemed like it was working, but then we had some connection problems. Yeah, and I... Th no clue what that was about, though, honestly, because it, it seems like it shouldn't have been a Wi-Fi thing at all. Right. But I'm wondering, well, yeah, I'm wondering, so does that mean we need, like, when we enabled the Wi-Fi, we didn't have that problem again, right? Yeah. Because the only other times we got the error was when you left the room to mm -hmm. recreate the room. Yeah. So. So I wonder, were you guys just in airplane mode? Well, we were in airplane mode even before. If but we were, we might not have been. Did you have the NFC enabled when you were in airplane mode? Oh, actually, no. We were not in airplane mode because we had to update the Switch earlier, mm. like a week, week ago or so, and no one's played it since then. So, so just collecting dust? Yeah, for the most part. Oh, I actually wanted to ask you. So you've finished your first run through of Persona 5. Mm-hmm. Why have you not started playing Zelda? Because I'm playing another run through of Persona <laughs> Five. Because the original thing was like, okay, wait. So Tiff's playing Zelda. Yeah. And when Persona Five comes out, I'm gonna get to play that first. Yep. So has she started her first playthrough of Persona? She has, but she's only like an hour in. So. Okay. Which I mean, I I want to reiterate that my second playthrough of persona 5 is not interrupting her play of persona 5 how far Just are you into that. your second playthrough i'm 
maybe 15 hours in. Not interrupting at all. <laughs> it really, really hasn't. It's only been like when she's been sleeping or not in the basement or not interested in playing games at that point, like if she's working on something else. So the, uh, the second playthrough I feel like is way more relaxing because I don't, I, I'm not trying to think 10 days ahead or two so weeks ahead. Do you have to, for the second playthrough, will you, do you have to um, still do your confidants again? Yes. It's just your skills. Reset. It's just that star skill that is. Yeah. The star skill, which I mean, minor spoilers, not really spoilers. Actually, there are no spoilers. I maxed out all my skills by the end of the first playthrough. And kind of the biggest motivating factors were that I did not max out all my confidant levels. I was off by one, which without using a guide, I considered to be... I, I didn't think it was that impressive of a feat. I think it's more impressive to say that if you're at least conscious of a few strategic decisions while you're going through your daily life, that the game allows you to get that far without having to you know, guide hunt is impressive of the game's design and i didn't even realize that i have you met the fortune teller yet yeah i'm still 50 50 on the 100 grand oh yeah no i uh i will tell you you don't get that money back <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it worth it <laughs> i think she is one of the more useful uh, confidants and I say that without like I, I say that now especially because I did not realize how useful she got because I misread something once you get her high enough in her confidant rank you can actually just pay her money to improve your relationships oh. and it, does, it doesn't take up time either from what, uh, what Lachlan told me and if I had her I would have been able I mean I had I had her maxed but I did not read her, 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 yeah, perks well enough because I just kind of assumed she was there just to analyze things. Like one of her skills is she tells you what the benefits or could, I guess. I don't know if it's guaranteed, but she'll tell you like what the perks of one of your confidants are. So like you'll learn, oh, at level such and such, the bread store lady will give me a discount on bread or will give me access to the secret bread that heals my SP or some bullshit like that. So it, it like helps you determine and prioritize who to, you know, level up first. That hundred thousand dollars though, yo. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking <laughs> like as soon as she asked me if I wanted to spend that money, I was like, well, I can't, I can't, I can't spend that money at the moment. I only have 96 grand. So I guess I'm not doing it. You know what? You kind of have like at that point in the game, I kind of had to not buy armor for the next dungeon and uh, or weapons. Actually, I hardly bought anything until the end of the game for weapons and armor. And yes, I did regret it a lot because it made some fights real fucking hard. I am currently right now struggling through the tomb. Oh, yes, the uh, Egyptian I feel, tomb. I feel very, very underleveled for this. Um, I will give you the heads up that the tomb is not meant to be fought entirely good because i am being a fucking phantom thief right now yeah no. and i am just like hugging walls like okay okay he's passed i don't think he'll see me okay good yep yep you, okay. you really have to take advantage of the fact that whenever you're in cover it doesn't matter where they are in relation to you oh yeah they will not find you have you already started unlocking the barriers in the tomb mm -hmm. okay yeah at that point, I maybe fought two, two, three times afterwards. I, the battles. There was one stupid dog that just like, I was like, okay, waiting for him to pass. And he'd like sniff, sniff, and then turn around to the play I was going. And I was like, fuck me. And, and then he'd come back and they'd go, sniff, sniff. I think someone's around here, but I can't find them. I guess I'll just go back the way I was just going. I'm like, you fucking fuck, fuck. Okay, fine. I guess I'll have to fight you. <laughs> so, so that's another thing. When you're, at a hallway, let's say a plain hallway, no turns, and there is a cover, like an object that you can hide behind. If you hide behind it, they're going to walk up to that cart and then turn backwards. They're yeah. not going to walk past it. 
usually. So what you need to do is actually hit that object and as they're walking towards your your cart or whatever, you can usually jump on different sides of it just using the analog stick. You need to maneuver around it just right so he will not trigger the stop mm. and will walk past you. Yes, it takes a while to figure out how you exactly do that. <laughs> Uh, that that being said, too, this is probably not going to apply to your run because the pyramid really is the hardest, not hardest, but it's the dungeon that incentivizes uh, stealth the most, in my opinion. Because I was just like, man, these other dungeons, sure, every once in a while I had to run into like issues with this one. I'm just like, fuck me, I really don't want to fight anybody in here. Yeah, yeah. Because, damn. <laughs> Do you have a lot of stealth items right now? vanish balls uh there's one that will like e- allow you allow you to evade detection there's also How one that will set people that one? Uh, sleep the avoid detection you get chased and you use it and i think they'll just won't be able to chase after you for a while oh, okay because i was trying to figure out how to like use some of these things and i was just like it's not letting me i guess i'll just not whatever use, yeah and i was like okay and i was like man I feel as if I'm getting really close to the next safe room and oh, Game it's over. so late and I'm like, oh. and, and that was my fear because we were all at SP and it was like, okay, I don't want to risk it and lose the last hour and a half of sneaking around that yep. I've been doing. So then I just use my like escape to the metaverse. The escape. go home? <laughs> yes. I use my go home item. I was like, okay, screw it. Cause, um, how question how do you switch out party members in the middle of battle Mm -hmm. you cannot until you get i've got a confidant skill oh uh then unless that person's maxed uh only joker can do it so you go into you hit r or l1 or l2 and you'll have the switch option okay because i haven't seen it and i was like man this would be a really good time to switch out somebody with some fucking sp (laughs) yeah that that specifically is done with joker and you can only do it if the person's healthy so if they have a status ailment they cannot be switched out so it's important to know your turn order at that point too because they don't get reset to a different time they fill in that person so uh, let's say you have, I'm trying to think of like the faster characters, like Morgana's typically pretty fast. Uh, let's say Morgana's at the start of your turn, then it's the, then it's Joker. If you switch in Ryo, uh, Ryuji, who's, you know, one of your slower characters, he actually won't go after Joker. He will go when Morgana would go next. Oh, okay. So, which can actually help you out in certain situations where like let's say you got a character that has buff uh like a buff skill that would normally go first but you put them into who was the last so that way the buff retains on for everyone like a defense buff longer so but besides the point i'm glad we're getting into persona deep thunk here because i'm like i'm like stupid parent that stupid tomb stupid too without doing any kind of spoilers anyway yeah, on to i think the game gets better too uh like from a story standpoint you're getting into the climb as i'll call it from this point on i figure as much so i've got a couple of pieces of like pseudo kind of news um sure. they now announced... is, it, is there anything that we should hold off for scott on no nah. okay otherwise i wouldn't even be talking about it so these are all fighting game related Tekken 7 has a PlayStation VR mode. Really? So, as of right now, what it kind of boils down to, I watched a couple of videos on it, it boils down to kind of like a spectating mode in like the practice area. So like instead of the camera being like directly showing the two characters, your head is the camera so you can like kind of look to the left, look to the right. It's just in this plain twilighty type area and the computer's not doing anything or if they are doing something, you set them to like CPU practice mode on a fighting game, basically. Sure. So no real rounds, no nothing like that. And I just found it interesting. So what's the purpose of 
of giving you that free look mode does that allow you to like look in t- at different angles of your fighters then or it does but i'm not 100 percent sure of like how it would be implemented in like a good way when i first heard vr mode i was like hmm i wonder what this is going to be and then i heard vr modes kind of like a spectator mode and i was like okay cool so it's like if you're playing if you're watching like two fighters online you're at the evo world championships they're playing tech at seven you toss on your playstation vr you've got your own little personal camera and you can kind of see but it's not that as of right now Right. They're just saying it's like an early alpha build of the VR. Oh, mode. okay, that that makes sense. So it's sense. not like a. This is exactly what it's going to be. They were just like, yeah, we kind of have it. We've got the foundation for it. If people say they like it and want us to expand upon it, we'll do something. Otherwise, it'll just stay like what it is. I'm like, it's pretty nifty. It's pretty okay. I'm also wondering if it will find its way into some of the single player. I'm assuming single player content that we've seen for Tekken 7. Uh, did you see any of the news regarding Tekken 7 having first-person shooter elements and some other things like that? A little bit, but I haven't really read up on it. Yeah, I, I touched on it lightly, and there's still not a whole lot known about it and whether it would actually be something that happens in versus mode or quote-unquote arcade mode. Uh Maybe it's associated to specials, but it seemed like it was more in between fight cutscenes sort of things. Yeah, and uh, it'd be cool to see if if they're building the VR mode for something along the lines of like a spectator thing. Like that's a completely di- different side. But if they incorporated VR to enhance some of those in be- like in between fight modes, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, but then you'd have to put on the headset. Like, well, I'm wondering, would you just keep the headset on if they had a an appropriate side view in VR. So like you could just leave it on during your entire perform so, or play. I've got like mixed feelings about that. So like whenever I play um Dirt Rally VR, mm-hmm. when you're in just the menus, you're just looking at a box right. with like a flat screen where I'm just like, that would have been nice to at least put me in like the world. So just like, hey, there's a flat UI in front of me, but well, you remember the menus in Resident Evil 7, right? Mm-hmm. Where like you were still in the three-dimensional space, but you had like a gooey, a semi-transparent yeah. gooey show up in front of you. Like, would that help you out? That would be or wonderful. help it. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of the way to go. Because, yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of, I don't know. I, at this point, I really don't know where VR is going to go from here because I... I haven't heard a whole lot of hype on anything regarding PlayStation VR. Unfortunately not. With the PlayStation VR, so like the biggest hype that's come out with VR in general as of like lately was when the Oculus Touch came out. Yeah. And before that, Resident Evil 7. Or they might have happened close to the same time. Yeah. But. So not sure where it's going to go. I know my PlayStation VR sadly has just kind of been sitting in its little box. Yeah, what, what's next is the question. Uh, hopefully something nifty and something fun. Like, what I would really love is because I do know on the... So it's, like, weird because what they have offering on the um, computers with the Oculus and the um, Vive are just, like, wonderful. And that's kind of really what I want to get into. But they're not doing any of that stuff with PlayStation VR. So, like, with the spectator mode coming to Tekken 7... That kind of gives me a little bit of hope because one thing I found that I thought was really cool with HTC Vive and the uh, Oculus Rift, you can watch Dota 2 games in spectator mode on those VR headsets. But so you can do like a zoom way out. You're like a god standing over this board of the like action happening. Or you can zoom really far in to where you can be like minion size. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then when you're like zoomed out and you're like this big god looking over the board, you can see like statues of each, like every character that's playing. So like that team's using this character, this character, and this character. You see statues with like banners that have their like stats and what items they bought. So it'll be like HP left at HP. uh, Is it SP? My God, what is SP actually? MP, MP. So HP, MP, what items they have, like their stats and everything like that. You can see that, and then you can zoom in and be like part of the action. 
and that'd be really nifty. So that's why Tekken 7, the, them adding this VR mode was kind of an exciting thing for me. It, part of me wonders too, uh, when you say like the spectacular things, I, I don't remember the exact word, uh, the excellent things for HTC Vive and Oculus, are you talking about the third party development that is kind of unrestricted for the most part? Yes. I mean, specifically with HTC Vive at least. Because, yeah, we, we can't get that on PlayStation. Sadly not. And what I really want is like, so one thing I really, really want, HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, currently since they've got touch, both have tilt brush. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I want I my type of tilt brush. And like that was one of the first things that happened, if you recall, back in E3, I think like three years ago when they first were like, doing this they had like here they made like the claymation things and they made them dance then the closest thing we got to that is uh, harmonics music and nah playstation had something i'm trying to think of what it was called and it was shown off as early as the first psvr demos when it was still called the morpheus but it i don't know if there's been any news of it lately i'm trying to remember what it was called too it had a it featured like a very creationist sort of theme to it. Um, and that's creationist. What I, was... I don't mean that within the religious standpoint. But. <laughs> no, and that's what I'm talking about. So me and you were probably thinking of the same exact tech demos. Yeah, where the hell is that now? Oc- harmonics music. Uh, well, I'm, I'll look it up while you're doing that. Uh, what other... What other topics did you have? Still on fighting games? Injustice 2. Three DLC characters have been announced. We've got Red Hood. We have Starfire. And, drumroll please, from Neverwhelm Studios. Sub-Zero. Hey! So they've been doing like a, bringing Scorpion to everything. Yeah. And this time they are just like, no, no, Sub-Zero. Finally, some ice love there, some cold love, I guess. So I found that kind of interesting. I was just like, so yeah, that was kind of the two fighting game topics. I'm, just, oh man, I'm getting more and more excited for uh for this damn game, Injustice Two. The more I see on it, it's just like, oh god. The game we were talking about, uh, I'm assuming we we're talking about the same game. It's called Dreams. Yes. And yes, it was hinted out to being released as early as 2016, uh, a beta specifically, but it has now been pushed to 2017. So maybe we can get that tilt brush type experience. But otherwise, the closest thing we have would be ESOL by Harmonix. ESOL? ESOL. Oh, ESOL. Is that actually... Harmonix, rest in peace. Yeah, that's the... That's the uh, harmonics music like weird thing. It yeah, one of it the it doesn't equate like one of the little chapters, mini games yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, it doesn't equate like at all. Like to the point of, I almost bought harmonics music just for Easel, but then when they told me I couldn't pick my colors, you can't pick your colors. You a can't pick your colors. Like that. Huh. It's kind of lame. Yeah. So it's like. So you can't even get your like creativeness on with the PlayStation VR, which makes me really sad because that's one of like the I watch this guy on YouTube. His name's Jazza. Shameless plug for him, whatever. Um, and he just does art. So he does like a lot of drawing tutorials and art and stuff. And one of his things is he'll do art in VR. So he'll get on Tilt Brush and he'll make these like epic battles and epic battlegrounds and things like that. So he did one for For Honor. Where he made, he like sketched out to like a couple of rough scenes, and then he did like the gladi- like a gladiator type person in a in the one of the samurai guys, so a knight and a samurai, and they were fighting each other, and it like looked wonderful. And I'm like, this is the type of thing that I want to see. And we've already got the move controllers, as shitty as they are, but we've got them. I really hope they. I think that's what they're working on right now. Is it? No. It's not what they're working on. I wish that's what they were working I, on. I was hoping you would say, yeah, Neil, there's a, there's a news article on it, and <laughs> this is the support uh, for that. I'm kind of looking that up out of hopes that that is happening. 
kind of looking it up, and I hope so that that's happening too, because because we're coming up on the second generation of VR hardware. Are we technically ready for it? No. <laughs> Is it going to get too real? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, you say that, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's necessarily true from an experience standpoint. I know we've we're hitting the second generation in terms of the compactness, the design of the headsets, but I don't necessarily know if we're going to have a better VR experience with the second generation of VR hardware. Yeah. Because the HTC Vive ha- now has a wireless version, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I believe it's the Vive. It's either the Vive or the um, Touch. My search is only showing uh, second generation models for the PS4. So old 2013 <laughs> news here but um so and when i say new iteration of hardware i'm specifically just kind of hoping for not using the five-year-old playstation camera oh so we're talking the, specifically about the ps4 in this case yeah because i do know that on pc side they're always making advances and doing other stuff but yeah sony's pulling a sony on me and making my ps vita unhappy again yeah let's let's actually even just look up the subreddit for psvr because those guys are usually the ones to stout or to to tote like the biggest thing uh so what is on the news for psvr call of duty world war ii aim controller for psvr oh Uh, yeah farpoint's coming out i'm excited redemption's guild mmorpg for psvr Darknet. And potentially Star Wars Battlefront 2 content for the PSVR. Oh god, Truck Simulator on the PSVR would be great. Oh, what? <laughs> Actually, I watched a bit of Truck Simulator re- <laughs> recently. And watching it kind of made me kind of want to buy it. I don't want to play it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I was watching a uh, a compilation for Giant Bomb, and I just watched one of the uh, one of the guys, two people watching and commenting, but one oh, one of the people trying or attempting to drive their truck in cinematic mode, which you know cinematic mode in a driving game is when the camera is, is in the worst case, <laughs> like worst place as possible. Yeah, <laughs> and it looks pretty. But you can't tell what left and right is at this point. Yeah, and it resulted in like rear-ending three cars. <laughs> well, not even just rear-ending, but like ramming into multiple cars at a stop, including a police car. And I'm just wondering to myself, like, yeah, I see the damage indication given on the truck itself, but is the cop going to follow him? <laughs> the clip didn't go long enough, and I'm just kind of wondering... <laughs> Like, what if? <laughs> well, what what is the state of police in Truck Simulator? Can you get pulled over for speeding? I don't know if you can. Like Truck Simulator to me, without having played any of those games, seems like a really bare bone game when it comes down to some of the most logical game design decisions, and maybe way too advanced when it comes to others. Like you, you can. You can make your own company in Truck Simulator, like, and, you know, buy more trucks and lease them out to other drivers. And you, you start off as, like, a driver that I'm assuming you're renting your truck or it's supplied by a company. And, like, you actually have to make the money and save up before you can get into, you know, owning your own truck and so forth. So it's very in depth in those regards. But at the, and, and like you even have energy and food food meters maybe but energy meters so like you will start to fall asleep so you can actually black uh, black out in the middle of your driving and then when the vision comes back your truck is now in a tree <laughs> or not in a tree but it has hit a tree but at the same time I'm watching this clip and I'm seeing this guy just like pile drive through or or you know like ram through multiple cars and at the end of this three or four car collision is a police car and i don't see the police car get back up and start chasing again they just they're going on this off-ramp 
this happens and he goes <laughs> directly back onto the on ramp to go back onto the interstate because who wants to sit around after an accident apparently <laughs> right <laughs> And like the truck didn't seem like it was in bad condition. I just saw the condition of the truck or the damage, which is a percentage, get really high. And like all of this fascinates me as a as someone that's interested in game design and interested in games as a whole as to how do people love playing truck simulator when there are so many like imperfections with it. Like I want to give it a shot and see maybe I would love truck simulator too. <laughs> Specifically, Truck Simulator Two, or you want to TOO in this case? <laughs> Maybe I would love Truck Simulator as well. Who knows? You want to drive some trucks around? No, we shouldn't. particularly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like the same desire I have to play Farm Simulator. At that point, yeah, that's. I'm not interested enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't bought it. So that says a lot, right? But at the same time, I kind of just want to experience it once. Like, Neil, you haven't lived until you've tried a combine. And I don't know. Maybe they're going to have corn husking simulator one day. Detasseling simulator. Just let's just simulate whatever we can, guys. Let's just play some I am bread. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good game when you think about it. It's so hard. Is it really? It's not easy. I've got it. Is it kind of along the same lines as Octodad? It's on the same lines of Octodad without any of the happiness. So like you've got to keep yourself fresh while still doing a lot of random shit. <laughs> There's a freshness meter? There's a freshness meter. How do you meter. stay fresh? Not by not getting on the floor. But you can go on countertops. Yes. And tables. Mm-hmm. But you, you like, can even get in between, like, you know, on top of the fridge, between like the counter, that, the cabinet that is on top of the fridge. You can even get there. I'd really like to interview uh, the makers of this game because does that mean they would eat bread after I smear it on the top of their fridge and hand it to them? Just got to get, as long as it gets into the toaster. Oh, so that's legal on every stage. You go I don't into know. the toaster. I haven't gotten far enough. <laughs> <laughs> I quite literally am on the first level still. And it's like, make it into this toaster. And I'm like, okay, cool. And eventually after making it to the toaster, you've got to get yourself into the toaster at the right angle so that way you can make yourself toast. Do you also have... Is- that becomes an issue, Neil. How does floppy bread make it into a toaster to make I, itself I toast? I just kind of assume that Bread simulator would be the same thing that goat simulator is, where there's no inherent goal. You're just a piece of bread. Nah. You're a piece of bread ruining this guy's life. Our biggest fan just called me. Uh, You can take it if you need to. I hung up on her. That's a shame. We're never going to get emails now. Nope. (laughs) Unless it's hate mail. (laughs) How dare you just hang up on your biggest fan? (laughs) Well, anything else you want to cover? Um, apparently there was very little um audio processing for Baby Groot. I I didn't watch it. Did you? I haven't seen it either. Uh, I'm planning on it. Still haven't seen the first one. Oh, is it in Humans trailer? In Humans trailer? Yeah. Well, in by in Humans trailer, it's an in Humans teaser trailer. And by teaser trailer, they literally just show the thing and say it's on ABC, or CBS, or NBC, or NBSCCADDDR. Did we talk about this last week, or am I crazy? We did not talk about Inhumans. We talked about Defenders, I think. Okay, okay. Man, the Marvel fucking TV universe is expanding more and more and more. Trying to keep up with the... um movie universe do you remember when there were movies and tv shows that were not about superheroes codename kids next door they were pretty much superheroes (laughs) that was actually a pretty good show wasn't it cartoon network is just full of gems start watching gumball recently yeah gumball's pretty good gumball's awesome regular show at times can be overbearing but that also has uh, it's good good episodes Yeah. yeah The uh, the 
what is it like 12 egg omelet episode is not bad i haven't seen that episode i'm sorry it's the badger is allergic to eggs i think it's the badger that that does it but really wants the hat that says like i don't remember it's just a trucker hat that says something stupid (laughs) and uh I, I'm getting something wrong, but he ends up eating too many eggs and like goes into like some sort of uh, allergic reaction thing. And then somehow this becomes like a mystical quest where the bird, w- one of the characters has to go and fight like weird deities and needs to pick out the correct hat at the end. Otherwise his soul will be taken. I, I don't even remember, but it goes places sounds, I was not prepared for. And it was great. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I like Cartoon Network. Yeah, there, there's some quality shows. You still got to watch TV Universe. I, I need to. I need to. I'm just, just not prepared to go places, okay? Oh my God. I just need some mindless shit for a while, which I guess watch, the first season. Watch F- season one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Cartoon Network show, and then it becomes not a Cartoon Network show real fast. Um. Oh, I guess, and last little bit of thing. This is from a boy, Scotty, in the bathroom over there. August 1st. Do, do we want to save this? Wait, August 1st. I didn't read this part. Go ahead. We'll use this as our segue into part two coming up soon. My oh boy Scotty's going to be excited. Long Dark. Official release date. August 1st. Whoop. Whoop. Which assumedly that's probably going to... Wait, that's hopefully going to have the story mode content as well. Episodes one and two. Yeah. Out of the five episodes. Are they selling it episodically? They're selling everything episodically. But that's weird because this is a, a sandbox game too. So it's like you're telling me that we're going to get Life is Strange 1 through 5, but Life is Strange is also Minecraft. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this was the Fancy Ramen Podcast, episode 14, part 1. We'll see you shortly for part two and discussion on The Long Dark and its countdown. Another episodes nine through 12. 12. And oh boy, I'm excited for that conversation. Bathroom break, guys. Bathroom break. Doot, doot.